Hello, everybody. So glad that you are joining us in the Patty Valenzuela podcast. I want to talk to you today about the power of surrender and why people don't surrender and what Jesus tells us about surrender. You know, surrender has such a, so, so many benefits and it's power when uh, we understand what surrender is, when we give a surrender our hearts, we surrender our minds and we give everything to God. Let me read to you a couple of scriptures found in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. And Jesus told his disciples, if anybody would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So when Jesus is talking to his disciples, he's talking about surrender. He said, if anybody is going to go after Jesus, he said, there are three things that we've got to do. One, we've got to deny ourselves. That is a form of surrender. We deny our own uh, reason. We deny what we want, our own desires. And then he says, take up your cross. And then he says, thirdly, follow me. When we look at Jesus's life and he's a perfect example of surrender. Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane doesn't want to surrender. He said to his father in heaven, if it be your will, please take this cup from me. And then at the end in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, he said, nevertheless, let it not be my will, but let it be your will. So why do people struggle with surrender? You know, it's possible for us to be believers, to have known God for a long time, but not have a full life of surrender. Sometimes we are living our lives with partial surrender and we don't even know it. We don't understand how to surrender sometimes or why or what prevents us from surrendering to God fully. There's power in surrender. When you surrender your life completely, then you're able to see the glory of God. Everybody is in a different level of surrender, in different dimensions of surrender. Your level of surrender will determine the capacity of presence of God that you will carry. It's through surrender. Surrender is giving your life up completely for God, where you say, it's not my will, but it's your will. And that means in every aspect of our lives, maybe you need to surrender a relationship where you are maybe hesitating. Maybe it's a friendship. Maybe it's a mindset, a belief system, a lie. Maybe it's pride. Maybe it's your time that you've not surrendered fully to God. Maybe there's still a part of you that operates in the flesh. And I believe that in this season, God is calling us to another dimension of surrender. Why? Because in the last days, he says he's going to pour out his glory. He's going to pour out a new wine upon his sons and his daughters. So God is calling us to a level of surrender so that you and I can receive all the benefits from that surrender. So why don't people fully surrender? I wrote down several reasons why people don't fully surrender. They don't surrender a thought. They don't surrender a lifestyle. They don't surrender, uh, you know, certain things, habits, uh, ways and systems of doing things. It's like we're in a cycle and we keep doing the same thing over and over. And yet we say, I need a change in this area, but we don't quite surrender it fully. So why don't people surrender uh, anything in their life for that matter that Jesus is asking to surrender? You know, it makes me think about this, the rich young ruler. And he tells Jesus, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And then Jesus says to him, sell everything that you have and then follow after me. And the rich young ruler looked at Jesus and said, never mind. And he walked away sad because he wasn't willing to surrender. Jesus wasn't trying to make him poor, quite the contrary. You know, with Jesus, we are rich, we're wealthy, we have everything, we have prosperity. Jesus wasn't trying to take something from him. He was trying to get him to a level of surrender. So when Jesus speaks to his disciples and he goes up to Peter and he says, hey, Peter, follow after me and leave everything. Peter was successful. Luke was a doctor. When Jesus asks us to surrender, it's not because he's trying to take something from us. He's actually trying to give us something. But God cannot do the fullness of what he wants to do in our lives unless we're willing to surrender and lay down our lives fully. What have you not surrendered? What are you holding on to? Is there time? Is it maybe where you put your energy? Is it money? Is it a relationship? What is it in your life? And why do we fail to surrender fully? Well, let me go over some things. The reason why people don't surrender fully is because of unbelief. They have doubt. They doubt God. Your unbelief will actually hinder you from surrendering fully to God. You doubt God. You doubt that God can bring the promise. You doubt that God can answer. And that unbelief that maybe God can give you a better relationship is actually keeping you from surrendering your plan and your idea. Another reason is selfishness. We're just flat out selfish. 
We want to do it our way. We think that our way is better. We're just selfish with our time. We're selfish with our ideas. We're selfish with the plans that we have for our lives. We're just selfish. We haven't really given God our full heart. Another reason is that he hasn't really won our hearts. Why do people not surrender? Because he hasn't won your heart. When God wins your heart, you want to surrender. You want to give him everything, every aspect of your life. You know, God, when he asked Jesus to lay down his life, Jesus said, if it's, if it's possible, can you just take this cup from me? I really don't want to go to the cross. I really don't want to do this. And there we find, I mean, the epitome really, and the example of surrender. Jesus didn't want to surrender. There was an area in his life where he knew it was going to be hard. It was not going to be easy. But he would rather surrender his own ideas, his ways, what he was about to go through. He surrendered it all, all for the sake of not being separated from his father. When God has not won your heart fully, maybe other things have your heart. That's called idolatry. When you have replaced God for something else, whatever God is willing, asking you rather, to lay down and you're unwilling to do so, that is your idol. So sometimes he hasn't won our heart. And when God wins your heart, you're willing to lay down anything for him. A lot of times people don't surrender because of ego. They have big egos. They think that their ideas, their concepts are better than God's. Another one is because they've given a surrender a bad name. You know, when you think about surrender, a lot of times that word is like a bad word. You know, surrender. You know, we've given the word surrender sometimes a bad name. But I'd like to come and clarify that. Surrender is not a bad word. Surrender is not a bad thing. Sometimes when you think of, of the word surrendered, like a person whose life is surrendered to God, sometimes it's almost portrayed as in sacrifice and pain. You know, when people think about the word surrender, you think, oh, it's going to be a painful life. You know, it's going to be a sacrificial life. Sometimes we think, oh man, you know, you're going to, you know, maybe God is going to now send you as a missionary. They're going to chop off your head and ISIS is going to come for you because you've surrendered your life. But really, truly, that is false. So maybe we have a wrong idea of what surrender is. That all we can think of is, is sacrifice, more sacrifice. God is asking for sacrifice. And sometimes when we think about that, you know, it's really bad advertisement when it comes to the word surrender. That is not true. That is a lie from the enemy. As a matter of fact, surrender, when your life is, is, is surrendered to God, there are such benefits to that. That's who goes into the deep. The people that are surrendered to God get to go into the deep. They get to, they get to experience the glory of God. They get to go in dimensions with God that maybe other people that haven't surrendered their God uh, or their life to God, they get to go into the deep of God. They get to experience the power of God. As a matter of fact, do you know how the power of God is released over your life? Through the power of surrender. It is the people that are surrendered to God that have deep encounters with God. Don't you want to go deeper with God? Don't you crave the glory of God? If you've ever felt the presence of God, can you imagine the latter glory? Can you imagine the presence of God, the weightiness of the new wine? Would you not want to go into the deep of God, into more presence of God? Well, sacrifice, which is really giving yourself up to God completely, that's the benefit uh, that comes with surrender is really just the presence of God and a deeper encounters with God gives you access to the power of God. It gives you access to the miracles of God. A life surrendered has access to miracles. A life surrendered has access to the power of God. A life surrendered completely has access to heaven. Their life is under an open heaven. Why do people not surrender? Let me keep going. Another reason is because they have past hurts. You know a past hurt will not allow you or permit you to surrender fully to God. Most of us have been disappointed in life by somebody or something. And maybe you put your faith in something or somebody. And sometimes it's really hard when you've been through something or through a hurt or through a pain or somebody disappointed you. Sometimes we're scared because of that pain to really let go and allow God to just take over all of our lives. Surrender is really giving your control over to God. You don't have the wheel anymore. He becomes the captain of that ship. He is the one that's steering the wheel. It's not you. He's the one that's calling the shots. That is surrender. And when you have a past hurt or a past uh, 
you know, experience that was very painful, a trauma. I find that when I minister people like that and they come from past experiences of pain, it's very hard for them to surrender fully to God. They give some of their lives to God, but not fully. Do you need healing? And maybe that's what's keeping you from giving fully your life to God without any, you know, any regard to fear of what if. Sometimes we don't surrender fully. Another reason is because we want control. We don't want anybody telling us what to do. We don't want anybody to call the shots. In other words, since the day we were born, mom called the shots, dad called the shots. You know, somebody always told me what to do. If it wasn't a coach, it was a teacher, it wasn't a teacher, it was a parent. If it wasn't the parent, it was a government. I'm tired of people calling the shots. I'm gonna call my own shots. I wanna be in control of my own life. And people say enough, I'm gonna call the shots. And that's why they have a hard time controlling uh, or letting God control their lives and surrendering fully to God. Let me tell you something. If you don't give that control up to God, then you're gonna call the shots. That means when you're in need of a miracle, guess what? You're limited to you now. When God, you have given your life completely to God and surrendered those areas of your life, your finances, your relationship, everything in your life, you've really given it to God, surrendered it. Then that means that God calls the shots. That means that God pays the bills. That means that God is in control. And we know that God is not limited to anything. God is a limitless God. He can do anything. He can move anything. He can heal anything. He could deliver anything. Wouldn't you want to give up that area of your life to God so that he can call the shots? He's got a better plan than you do. Sometimes we don't surrender fully because of dreams. We've got dreams and we're almost afraid that by giving complete control to God, that God somehow we are going to lose the dreams. We're going to lose, you know, these dreams that we had for our lives. And we're now going to be forced to accept maybe dreams of God. And maybe I'm not going to like it. <laughs> but Romans says, unless you surrender, unless you're transformed by the renewing of your mind, it says you can't accept the good, the perfect, the pleasing will of God. It's good. His will is good. You know, sometimes we're afraid that our dreams are not going to be accomplished or our dreams are not going to come to fulfillment because, oh my God, I'm going to I'm gonna lose control and now God's going to make me take on this dream that I'm not going to like. That's so, that's such a lie that we've sw swallowed. Quite the contrary. The plans of God, they're better than yours. They're perfect and they're pleasing and you're going to like them better, I guarantee you. A lot of times we don't surrender to God because of fear. Fear. We surrender to God uh, some areas, but not every area because we're scared. We're scared that God is going to maybe do it a way that maybe we don't want him to do. You know, he's going to send me off to China and be a missionary and I don't want that. I want to do this. Well, that fear has got to go in your life. Sometimes we're afraid that God's best is not a life that we're going to want. We're afraid that, you know, oh man, I'm going to wind up somewhere I don't want to be. And you're scared. But that's a lie. The plans of God are good. The plans of God are pleasing. Don't you think that your heavenly father knows better? <laughs> he knows your future. You're a predestined generation. You're a predestined people. That means he already knows your end. It's better than what you can ever imagine it. I can't tell you how many times I have been fearful of letting something go. All to later find out that it was, why didn't I let go a long time ago? It was better than what I thought. You know, I was trying to control it. A lot of times people don't let go, let's move on, is because of loss of identity. We're afraid that we're gonna lose our identity, I guess. I guess we think like, no, what if God makes me do such and such and, and you know, I'm gonna lose myself in it. No, on, the, on the, quite the contrary. When you surrender, you find your identity. Your identity is found in Him. A lot of times people don't lose, or they don't, they don't wanna lose control. They don't wanna surrender, it's because they're comfortable. Some of us are not willing to give up our comfort. Some people don't want to surrender because they're comfortable and they're afraid if they give total control to God, then now God is going to ask them to live this lifestyle that is so uncomfortable. We don't want to live our, leave our comfortable life. And sometimes we're afraid of losing that comfort. We're comfortable. We're comfortable where we're at. And now God's going to demand another area, you know, of surrender. Look what Matthew 19, 29 says, and everyone who has left houses, or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or farms for my name's sake will receive many times as much and will inherit eternal life. That means that anything that you're willing to surrender, 
He said, I'm going to give you so much more than what you think you're losing. So really, it's a win-win. A lot of times, and I would say it's the number one reason why people don't surrender is pride. Pride is the number one reason why people don't surrender. Pride is the number one reason as to why we don't give the full control of every area in our lives. If we got truly honest with ourselves, sometimes pride is there and it's at work. We're saying to God, you know what? I don't want to let you take control of my life. We want to call the shots. That's pride. We want to say when. That's pride. We want, we want to control our own lives. That is pride. And then, isn't it interesting how when we finally get into trouble in that area that we did not want to surrender to God, suddenly we find ourselves in trouble. Suddenly we find ourselves in some situation that we know we can't fix. And where do we run to? God. The very one that told us to let it go. The very one. And then there, then we let go of our pride so that God can come and fix it. Fix what he was originally going to take control of. And it would have been much better. Proverbs 29, 23 says it like this. Once pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will attain honor. And the last reason that I'd like to leave you, which I'm sure there's many, many more, is just ignorance. You're in some kind of delusion, perhaps. Maybe you think that, you know, surrendering to God is just uh, not something that you ought to do. That, that the God that you maybe accepted in your heart is not asking you to do that. You know, maybe you just, you just are delusional. You just think that you can accept Jesus in your heart and live this controlled life. You control the shots. You say when. You say how. And that your life is going to somehow be better. You don't know better. God knows better. He knows our end. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. I guess in this podcast, I'd like to have you do some soul searching and really ask yourselves, what areas are not surrendered? What areas in your life are not fully surrendered? And are you experiencing the whatever you say, God, I'm going to do? Are you really experiencing that, God, the only thing that I want is what you want for my life? Are you really experiencing the fullness of what I just said? That, God, whatever you want for my life, nothing else matters. I only want what you want. Every area of my life, at any cost, I'm willing to surrender it. Are you living that life? If you could say here today, no, then maybe this is a soul searching in this podcast and God paused your life to maybe tell you, hey, this is time to align and surrender every area of your life. I'm going to pray for you. Father, in Jesus name, I pray for your people. And I pray God that there be such a conviction in the heart of your people today, that if there's not a genuine surrender in an area that today you would expose that Lord. And I pray God that your people would go to the next dimension of surrender, that they would surrender pain, hurt afflictions, anger, bitterness, every area in their lives. Father, so that they can attain the more, the better, the better plan. Lord, it's good, it's pleasing, and it's perfect. Father, I just pray for your people today, declaring, God, that there's victory in their surrender. There's power in their surrender. There's glory in their surrender. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. We'll see you guys next time.